Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Math Stats, uh, and this is another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus, in particular a uh, differentiation from first principles. Uh, and in this video, we want to concentrate on the derivation uh, of the product rule. Right? And just let's just recall what the product rule actually says to us. So let's recall. So our product rule says that if we have a function, that if let's say, <coughs> excuse me, that we have a function uh, f of x is equal to a u of x times v of x, uh, where both u of x and v of x are two functions in x. And more importantly, u of x and v of x are also differentiable. We can differentiate them, okay? Uh, well, then, well, then we have uh, dy dx. dy dx uh, is basically equal to uh, du dx times v plus uh, it's equal to v times, sorry, u times times uh, dv dx. And this is the typical product rule. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to differentiate, uh, we'd like to differentiate a product of this form and show that we actually arrive with this particular, with this particular, this particular identity. Uh, but what we also need to recall is the definition of, the definition of a derivative. Uh, so that the derivative of a function dy dx, let's say a function y in x, that dy dx, dy dx is simply equal to the limit of <coughs> f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h tends to zero. And we can change these h's, these are infinitesimals. And uh, we can change these infinitesimals to be some other symbol, for example, like maybe, like maybe delta x and say, uh, it's f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x tends to zero. But just maybe just for space, we'll just let delta x be the same as h. So <clears throat> what we have is we have this particular function here, f of x, and it's basically the product of two functions in x. And both of these functions, u and v, are differentiable. And what we'd like to find is we'd like to find their derivative. So let's just start this off. So let's just say let, let f of x uh, equal u of x times v of x, well then we have that the y dx, the y dx, or let's say the derivative, the derivative of f of x, uh, which is can be symbolized as let's say f prime of x is equal to the limit, is equal to the limit of f of x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as h tends to zero. Now what we know is we're going to evaluate the function. We're going to evaluate this function f at x plus h to see what we get, uh, and then evaluate it just at x to see what we get. So we're going to expand this out. So this becomes, so therefore we have dy dx, dy dx is equal to the limit, as h tends to zero, of f of x plus h. Now f of x plus h is the same as a u of x plus h times v of x plus h. Okay, that's what f of x plus h is. It's f of x evaluated at x plus h. So the evaluation of these at x plus h is both of these particular, both of these particular uh, terms here. Uh, so that's f of x plus h minus minus f of x, which is simply so. Oops, minus f of x, which is simply uh, u of x times times v of x, which all needs to be divided by which all needs to be divided by divided by h. And what we're going to do here is a bit of a, bit, a little bit of sleight of hand. We're going to introduce something here between both of these particular terms. We're actually going to introduce the factor. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're going to introduce the, fact, the factor. Let's say uh, u of x, uh, u of x times let's say v of x plus h minus uh, let's say for argument's sake, let's say or plus let's say minus that particular term plus that term u of x times v of x plus h. So we're just going to introduce this. You can actually see that uh, minus u of x times v of x plus h plus u of x times v of x plus h is actually equal to zero. So introducing that term here has no effect other than it's going to help us to expand out this particular, this particular, uh, let's say, this particular uh, set of terms and to find and to actually factor it, right? So what we have then is therefore we have dy dx, dy dx is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of this particular term of u of x plus h times v of x plus h, okay? Minus uh, u of x times v of x plus h plus u of x times v 
of x plus h minus uh, u of x times v of x, okay? And that's all needs to be divided by, that all needs to be divided by h, okay? Now what you can probably see here, hopefully, is that between this term and this term here, there's a commonality. The commonality is the v, this function here, evaluate that x plus h is common here, and it's also common here. So between these two terms here, we have commonality. And also between these two terms here, we have commonality, which is which is the u of x here and also the u of x over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hoist that commonality out and see what's left behind. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, let's say, just gonna fold over this page so that we can actually see this a little bit better. So let me just fold this over here. Just give me one moment. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to look at this particular term. Whoops, let me just fold this once more. Okay, there we go. And that should give us the term that we require. So what we're going to do is, this is probably one of the drawbacks of using paper. So just so that we still have this particular term up here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this particular term and we're going to evaluate it. So therefore we have, so therefore we have uh, dy of x, dy dx, is equal to the limit as h tends to zero.